Hi there. I am Dr. Brenda Kahn from the Veterinary Channel. The topic of today is chronic kidney failure in dogs. By subscribing to our channel, you are helping us to train the veterinarians of the future. After this presentation, we recommend our veterinary students get familiar with the International Renal Interests Society staging system. Also, the students should be able to explain the importance of performing an SDMA test in a geriatric patient. The kidneys perform a variety of activities. However, they are primarily responsible for removing waste items from the bloodstream, maintaining healthy levels of certain vital minerals such as potassium and salt, conserving water, and producing urine. Many people believe that chronic kidney failure or chronic renal failure refers to the kidneys ceasing to function and producing no urine. Regrettably, this is not true. Chronic kidney failure or chronic kidney disease is defined as the kidney's inability to adequately filter waste materials from the blood, not as the inability to produce urine. Ironically, most dogs with the renal disease make a lot of urine yet their harmful wastes are not properly removed. Because kidney tissue cannot regenerate once it has been destroyed, the kidneys have a significant reserve capacity for performing multiple functions. Thus, at least two-thirds of the kidneys must be dysfunctional before clinical symptoms manifest. This fact frequently signifies that the devastation has occurred for months or even years, chronic, before the failure becomes apparent. In dogs, chronic kidney disease is connected with age and can be thought of as the kidney tissues wearing out. The age of onset is frequently linked to the dog size. The majority of small dogs exhibit early indications of renal disease between the ages of 10 and 14. On the other hand, large dogs have a reduced life expectancy and may develop kidney failure as young as seven years old. When disease or advanced age impairs the filtration process, blood flow to the kidneys is increased to boost filtration. As a result, the body must increase the volume of blood going through the kidneys as the number of toxins removed each time decreases. This adaptation results in increased urine output. In addition, to prevent dehydration from increased urine fluid loss, thirst and water consumption are enhanced. Thus, increased water consumption and urine are some of the initial clinical symptoms of kidney failure and are referred to as compensated renal failure. After approximately two-thirds of the kidney tissue is lost, the level of waste products in the bloodstream rapidly increases, resulting in an apparent sudden start of severe disease. Loss of appetite, sadness, vomiting, diarrhea, and bad breath are all symptoms of severe renal failure. In addition, ulcers are occasionally discovered in the mouth. A thorough urinalysis and a blood chemistry analysis are the two most common diagnostics for kidney function. A urinalysis is required to determine kidney function. A decrease in urine-specific gravity is the first sign of renal failure. Proteinuria, or increased protein in the urine, is another sign of impaired kidney function. A blood biochemistry analysis provides information on the function of the body's numerous organs. For example, two waste products in the blood, urea nitrogen and create 9 indicate impaired kidney function. Other blood tests, including albumin, globulin, potassium, sodium, phosphorus, calcium levels, and red and white blood cell counts, are necessary to identify the extent of the failure and the best course of treatment. A newly developed blood test for SDMA, a naturally occurring biological biomarker of kidney function, has been utilized to evaluate if an individual is experiencing early renal failure. SDMA concentrations exceed the typical reference interval well before serum creatinine elevation. This observation will aid your veterinarian in diagnosing and treating your dog's ailment at an earlier stage. A dog suffering from compensated chronic renal failure with only minimal kidney function may have normal BUN and create nine values but a low urine-specific gravity. However, if considerable stress occurs, such as illness or surgery, 
the kidneys may fail, rapidly raising blood test readings. A dog with a low urine-specific gravity and increased BUN and create nine levels is classified as azotemic. According to the IRIS, International Renal Interest Society, system, the veterinarian will stage the patient. Iris staging is defined by serum creatinine levels, with substaging determined by the presence of protein in the urine, as indicated by a urine protein, creatinine ratio, and blood pressure measurements. Utilizing this staging system enables the veterinarian to make more informed decisions about initiating therapy, evaluating progress, and assessing the patient's prognosis. Blood tests are used to diagnose chronic kidney failure, and specialized medications are used to correct specific problems. Regrettably, the kidneys are irreversibly damaged before detection in some instances, rendering medical treatment futile. However, many dogs can lead everyday lives for months or even years with early detection and active treatment. Treatment is typically divided into two phases. Flushing the kidneys, removing accumulated toxins from the blood, managing the disease, and delaying its progression. The first step involves administering large amounts of intravenous fluids to flush out the kidneys and bloodstream. This flushing process is termed diuresis, and it restores function to mildly injured kidney cells by eliminating harmful compounds and establishing a more favorable environment for repair. If sufficient functional kidney cells remain, the kidney may adequately meet the body's filtration and waste removal requirements. Replacement of various electrolytes, particularly potassium, is part of the fluid treatment. Appropriate nutrition and medicine to control vomiting and diarrhea are critical components of initial treatment. Often, the dog will begin to feel better immediately once this treatment step is initiated. Three outcomes are conceivable following the initial round of treatment. 1. The kidneys will recover normal function between a few weeks to a few years. 2. The kidneys will restore normal function during treatment but will fail again within 3 to 14 days of treatment ceasing. 3. Kidney function will never revert to normal. Regrettably, no credible test exists that can accurately anticipate the outcome. Each case should be aggressively pursued and closely watched. Even dogs with severe renal failure may benefit from treatment and reclaim their usual quality of life. The second step of treatment aims to assist in maintaining normal kidney function for as long as possible. This second phase is typically completed using one or more of the following, depending on the state of your pet. Nutritional specialization is critical in effectively treating dogs with chronic renal disease. The optimal diet for a dog in the advanced stages of kidney failure is low in protein, low in phosphorus, and unacidified. This food assists in reducing protein wastes and metabolic toxins that may cause the patient to feel ill or lethargic. Reduced protein diets also reduce the workload on the kidneys in advanced renal disease. Veterinary nutritionists have developed commercial therapeutic diets to treat various stages of chronic renal disease. The veterinarian will propose the most suitable food for the dog, containing the proper amount and quality of nutrients. The kidneys eliminate phosphorus from the body as a phosphate binder. Phosphorus accumulates in the blood when the filtering process is compromised. Additionally, elevated blood phosphorus levels contribute to fatigue and decreased appetite. Certain medications bind extra phosphates in the digestive tract, preventing them from being absorbed into the circulation, reducing blood phosphorus levels. Once the dog is stabilized, the owner can administer fluid subcutaneously, under the skin, to him at home. This medication prevents dehydration assists the kidneys in flushing out toxins, and replenishes electrolytes. This procedure should be done twice daily to once weekly, depending on the dog's renal failure severity. Most dogs thrive when given a tiny bit of hydration every day. Once the dog has reached a state of stability, the veterinarian in charge of the case may reduce the frequency of treatment.
Although it may seem challenging to perform at-home fluid treatment, the dog owner will be astonished at how simple the approach is and how well most dogs accept it. Proteinuria treatment. Dogs with proteinuria are more likely to develop chronic kidney failure. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, blood pressure drugs, will assist in lowering kidney pressure, hence reducing the severity of proteinuria. A medication used to control the parathyroid gland and calcium levels. The body must balance calcium and phosphorus in the blood at approximately a 2 to 1 ratio. Increased blood phosphorus levels caused by renal failure encourage the parathyroid gland to raise blood calcium levels by extracting calcium from the bones. This adaptation can be beneficial in balancing the calcium to phosphorus ratio, but it also results in brittle bones that are readily fractured. Calcitriol has been shown to suppress the parathyroid gland and promote calcium absorption from the gastrointestinal system. This drug is necessary if there is evidence of parathyroid gland dysfunction. A medication that stimulates the bone marrow to produce new red blood cells. The kidneys produce a hormone called erythropoietin, which enables the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. As a result, many dogs with renal failure may produce insufficient erythropoietin, resulting in anemia or a low red blood cell count. In most dogs, synthetic erythropoietin stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells and corrects anemia. Unfortunately, the medication cannot be used indefinitely in some dogs because the immune system perceives it as foreign and produces antibodies against it. However, your veterinarian may recommend this treatment if your dog has persistent anemia. The prognosis is quite variable depending on the dog's response to the initial stage of treatment and the dog owner's ability to perform the follow-up care at home. However, most veterinarians encourage treatment in most situations because many dogs respond well and maintain a good quality of life. Treatment and follow-up care are relatively easy and inexpensive, and extending the length and quality of life for their faithful companion represents the ultimate reward for many dog owners. Thank you for helping us to train the veterinarians of the future.